the end of last year, um, October 2023, I drove down to Northumberland and uh, I joined Steve from Sparta Fishing to fish for some cod. Storm Babbitt had other ideas. Well, fast forward to January 2024. We've just had Storm Henk come through. Steve from Sparta Fishing is coming up to join me on my local beach, Inverbervy Beach in Aberdeenshire. And we're gonna have a day's fishing. We see if the expert can teach me how to catch some cod. <laughs> so, welcome to the channel. Welcome along for the adventure. And the next time you'll see me is down on the beach in the Burvey, and we'll have a chat with Steve. There he is, yeah. Okay, so here we are in the Burby Beach and uh, Steve has driven all the way up from Northumberland this morning. So if he's looking a bit blurry eyed, that's why. I am, I'm, I was a little bit tired, but I had a little snooze before you arrived. <laughs> so. so the plan is that um, we've got all day and into the night to see if these cod want to come and play. And uh, I'm taking some tips from Steve. We've got a couple of baits in the water already. Uh, I'll take you through my rig. It's actually a copy of Steve's um, a little bit later. So this is Inverbervy Beach. You do know it. I've been here a few times before. It's looking very fishy, isn't it? It is, yeah. Um, it's, it looks really deep, not too far out. Um, I just popped the question about it, what is the possible chance of a conga here? Because like you say, it looks so much it's like a mini chisel in itself, isn't it? Yeah. Which is exciting. Yeah. It's one of the few beaches I know in this area that's got all these round stones just like this, you know? Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a good place for it. Yeah. So we've actually come a little bit further down the bay today. Normally I fish up further that end, uh, but we've had a lot of rain, so there's a lot of fresh water coming in that, uh, from the river just up there. So um, we're fishing a little bit further away. The vehicles are up in the car park, so it's all nice and easy. And uh, there's a quick access to a footpath at the back here if we need to beat a hasty retreat tonight. <laughs> so, fingers crossed, we're gonna get some cod this time. What yeah, I hope so. We've got all the right bait. We've got um, cart, frozen black lug, um, mackerel, mackerel, squid, squid, bluey. bluey. Uh, what was that other stuff? I've got coral, is it called? Coral, yeah. Muscle. Yeah. Got some muscle, muscle as well. Yeah. So hopefully we'll we'll get some fish anyway. Yeah. If these um, cod don't like these baits, there's something wrong with them. <laughs> right. I, I've got a sneaky feeling that it will be I think it'll be tenfold better at night. Yeah. I do think that. However, there's got to be fish knocking about here, hasn't there? The sea's kicking oh, up a little bit of a Yeah. A little bit of a mess, it's starting to roll a little bit from, from the north. Um, tide's on our side, on its way in. Yep. Tide, tide's in about uh, two hours time, so um, it's around about um, half past 12, 20 to 1 today, high water. So we'll, we'll be fishing down and yep. then and back up. come back up into dark. Yeah, hopefully, and then uh, you can't say we well, haven't given it a big crack if we do all that, you know. So. If there's fish there, I'm pretty sure we'll uh, we'll catch them. It's just we just need a little bit of luck, a little bit of patience. Right. Hopefully. Well, baits are in the water. We'll bring you back in a in a bit. So we've just got Steve baiting up there. Put a little bivvy up. It's just a kid's play tent, just to keep the cameras dry whilst we're on the beach. Looking nice over here, where we've got the uh, the reef coming in. So I just had a bit of a pull down bite there. We'll see what's all going on. Yeah. Waiting for it to come back. <laughs> so 
So we've got Gordon to thank for the uh, for the rag here with this nice big clip on there. Thanks, Gordon. That's been put to good use today, mate. Um, definitely had a bite. Uh, I probably lifted into it too early, so I've just been getting some tuition off Steve. Should have really left that a little bit longer to make sure that the fish had actually taken it. I thought I felt it when I lifted into it, but um, anyway, it's all learning. Every day's a school day, so. Good to, good to see there's some fish out there anyway. So yeah, we've got the raves crashing in behind us. We're about now an hour before high water. It's what they call a, uh, a dreek day up here in Scotland. Steve and I are busy chatting away, getting some interesting information. He's, he's the one that really knows uh, sea fishing. When I was a kid, I used to do just coarse fishing. So um, a lot of this sea fishing is new stuff to me. Really enjoying this challenge of getting some decent cod. We'll probably stand a better chance as we fish into dark, which is what happened last time I was here. Just keeping our eye on those waves so they don't come crashing in at us. So both been fresh enough the baits. Um, I've gone for this uh, crab thing, the cart. Uh, put that on, nice smelly bait. Mmm, hopefully the cod like that. We're just about after high water now. Just going to fish the tide down a little bit and then we're going to move along the beach, give that a try, fish the tide down. And as we fish the tide down, we'll be uh, getting into dark then and I think things will pick up a bit more. I've got plans for here in the summer now I've been here. Yeah, should I've be good. Plans in the summer. You reckon it feels bassy? It, doesn't feel, it just looks it, feels it. I, I think I can smell them. <laughs> I'll give it a go in the summer, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, I'll concentrate on the winter for now, eh? That's it, yeah. Just tighten this line up a bit. I'll tell you what I do like about fishing beaches is the fact that I can wear my float suit. Yeah. Another one piece. Yeah. Rather than... I mean, the waders and, and jacket are... are my jacket's warm enough, but the waders are, are, aren't as warm. No. I'm fishing here where I, I know I don't have to wade out. Although I could wade up with my knees and I wouldn't get wet, but it's, a lot, it's just a lot warmer having the one piece. I've got I've got about five layers on under here. Yeah, but I'm warm. But when we were down uh, in Northumberland and we had all that rain, oh, I was still dry mo mainly under this. There were really? one or two wet bits around the neck. Oh, it was soaked, wasn't it? Yeah, because I went. You were wringing your hat out. Because one was an IMAX cord, mm. which I was warned about that particular one. I'm yeah. Not, not seeing all IMAX, but that particular jacket. My mate said you'll get wet in that, and I said no, that's fine. Got soaked. Then I put, a, I replaced it with with the Abu, which I thought was a, a rain jacket, but it wasn't. It's a wind cheater. Yeah. So I got soaked in that. You, honestly, <laughs> every single bit of my body was wet. Yeah. I was drenched, absolutely drenched. I was crinkly. I looked like Grandpa Simpson. Yeah. It was a hell of a day, wasn't it? Uh -huh. <laughs> so the things we do for YouTube. It was relentless, though, wasn't it? <laughs> I know, all, all the naked videos. Yeah, and no fish. <laughs> no. Well, it was the weed that spoiled that though, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, you can fish any conditions, but weed. Yeah. Lip, you can fish anywhere in any direction, any sea, any storm, as long as you're safe. Yeah. But once there's weed in the water, right off. Cracking little hit. I left down the road, it went like I just cut the filter down and back up. You can't feel it. Another bite there, whilst I was changing the battery in the camera. <laughs> so I didn't get that one. But the bait's out again. It's a good sign. So, having had a great session in the morning, we fished from uh, something like about, I think about half past 10 up to high water and just a bit beyond. Uh, we decided that we'd take a break, go and have a warm up in the motorhome, get ourselves a coffee, and then, about four o'clock, decided to go back out and fish into the night. And that's when all the action cracked off. <laughs> I was busy getting the gear down and 
this is what happened. What I tried to do was uh, run down the, the slope um, because I felt myself slipping. So I just thought, I'll, I'll run down the slope. You know how it is. And uh, speed got the better of me. <laughs> and I ended up putting my arm out to uh, save myself uh, whilst I was doing a face plant. <laughs> Not a good move on the stones. I tried to get up and my arm didn't, didn't work at all. So I thought I'd broken it. I've been really lucky, it's just dislocated. Just dislocated. <laughs> dislocated in a great way. <laughs> Took two medics to pull and push the thing back into joint. Ouch. That was not on the plan. A trip to A&E. <laughs> just what I needed. The ambulance didn't take long to get there at all. So yeah, I slipped going down the wall and uh, tried to save myself, but probably made matters worse and uh, ended up doing a face plant on the stones and but it turned out to be a dislocated shoulder. I've saved you from all the gory details and pictures. Um, we'll keep those quiet, eh? Uh, I don't look too bad this morning, just a black eye and a few cuts and things, so, uh, and an arm and a sling. <laughs> what did I learn from that? And what could I share with folks? Well, I was very lucky. You know, Inverbervie is relatively safe beach. You know, it's not somewhere where it's like a rock mark and you're clambering and doing some mountain goat stuff. And it just goes to show it can happen anywhere that you can fall over and, uh, and have a problem. So I was lucky. I was fishing into the dark, but I was fishing into the dark with a mate, with Steve. Thank goodness he was there. This could have been a different scenario if I'd been fishing on my own into the dark, because having had a fall, I think that it might have been quite a different outcome. I could have been lying on the ground for a bit of a while. I was also fishing a mark where the ambulance could get very close. <laughs> so on a couple of counts, that was, that was really helpful. But it is worth bearing in mind, think, think about stuff. Uh, I will be thinking about stuff more in the future. Um, you can't stop accidents happening, but you, you can try to minimise them. Could I have done anything different? I suppose I could have walked the long way round and, and not tried to go down a bit of a slope. I've walked up and there several times and not had a bother. Um, but there you go, had a bother this time. What else? Well, if you're going to stop yourself falling, put your left arm out, not your casting arm. So <laughs> I've got my casting arm in, uh, in a sling. So it's going to be a little while before I, I can get back out and make some more videos. Hopefully everyone's okay. Uh, you don't go and do what I did. I just have to thank Steve for really coordinating things and doing all the phone calls and get my wife to come over and pick the car up and all that kind of stuff. A huge, huge thanks for the NHS team, all of them. Ambulance drivers, the people shoving me about on trolleys, x-ray, doctors, everybody. So thanks a lot for that. Thanks for looking after me and patching me up. You've all done a great job. Thank you so much. We treasure you. You're really good, the NHS. Thank you so much. At some point, I'll be back out in the bank and, and we'll take you fishing again. I hope you've enjoyed this short video. <laughs> I was trying to get some arty shots going uh, at the beginning of it. There's one or two things that I might do uh, talking about the boat or the kayak or the engine and those sorts of things. So um, there might be a few kind of non by the water's edge kind of videos that come up just to uh, keep you interested. <laughs> keep my interest. I love doing the filming. I enjoy doing that and the editing. I think there was another channel, The Ginger Fisherman, that put his arm out recently as well. So joining the club here. <laughs> okay, bye for now and I'll see you in the next video, hopefully on the bank. <laughs>